Today I want to talk to you about the spoken voice. We are going to go through what is the role of spoken voice in our life, how can we modify it to get what we want in life, and also why do we hate it so much. My name is Jorgelina, I am a vocal coach and I specialize in training the voice from a holistic and integral perspective. Actually I'm going to start with the last point, why do we hate our voice so much? I don't think I know anyone that doesn't hate the sound of their own voice. I was one of them myself. Most people I come across don't like to hear themselves in audios or recordings and things like that. Now one of the reasons why is because when we hear ourselves when we are speaking or singing, we don't hear ourselves in the same way that other people hear us. We hear ourselves from a combination of what comes from the air to the external ear, but also through the internal mechanisms of hearing, the conductions through our bones. The result of the sound that we hear at the end as our voice is very different than what other people hear. So when you hear yourself in a recording, not only you are not hearing the final product that you hear when you are speaking, but also you are hearing it through a device that is not how other people hear you. So basically you are hearing yourself, but you sort of not don't recognize yourself so much. Through voice work, the more familiar you become with the sound of your voice through recordings and things like that, especially if you have recordings of very good quality, you are going to hopefully get more appreciative of your amazing voice that gives you so much in life. I always think it's such a tragedy that, you know, most people don't love their voice. It's like they can learn to love their body and themselves, but not their voice. A little bit of a tragedy because your voice is, you know, your most potent communicator, shows others and yourself your deepest emotions. That actually brings me to point number two. What is the role of our voice? The vocal cords are actually not there for you to speak as the main role. The main role of the vocal cords is actually, well, they get another name when they are in another function, but um, it's the same structure and they have other functions that come way before speaking such as being a valve of pressure and of course it's also an inspiratory muscle. But when we talk about the phonatory function we call them vocal cords or vocal folds, actually vocal folds is a little bit more technically correct. Now as I said speaking is not the primary function of the larynx and the vocal cords and singing is even less. <laughs> so singing and speaking are like really down the priority list of the functions that this structure have. Speaking did evolve with us and we have this beautiful gift of being able to differentiate language and communicate through words as well as sound. Only really, really good actors can actually lie with their voice. And people can lie with their body and with their words, but not with the tone of voice. Because the voice is a result of many things that happen in your body, intimately linked to your breathing and your body tone, and that of course is also totally linked to your emotions. So for example, if you are angry, people will be able to tell, even if you try to hide it, you say, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, but you can hear for the tone of voice, that is something, uh, of course, not fully conscious. When you're happy, your voice starts becoming a little bit more energetic and higher in pitch. When you are sad, it starts becoming a little bit lower, but also a little bit weaker, and so on. So the voice is a giant, potent communicator, and you should uh, use it wisely, which brings me to the next point, how to make the most of your voice to get what you want in life. Through the way you use your voice, you can have certain effect on people. Of course, we are talking about a body language that has to be with the tone of voice. That is captured subconsciously by people. And there are a lot of studies about this and there are a lot of things you can do with it. In fact, very successful politicians usually have a vocal coach or a voice coach to help them be a leader and get people to follow them. But there are some very general things that you can have on mind to have a little bit more control over the effect that you produce in other people. I'm going to talk about two of them today. The first one is how to get people to actually listen to you when you speak and to maybe help you be perceived as a little bit of a more higher status and is the pitch and the color of your voice. We perceive lower frequencies and slow sounds as calmer. So if you want to get people to listen to you, something you can do is to get your voice a little bit lower and then that is going to help you have a little bit more presence. I use that trick a lot when I am teaching kids and they get a little bit 
too excited and so I lower my voice and they automatically start paying a little bit more attention. So you can do that, it's available to you, you can play around with that right now. It has to do with two things, not only the pitch, so decrease the pitch in which you speak, but also the amount of uh, harmonics, uh, low harmonics that you are boosting and you can control that through the space on your resonator. So basically your main resonators are the throat area and the mouth area. So if you are speaking with a mouth that is very very close then it's going to be hard to boost any harmonic. But if you start opening the mouth a little bit more then those frequencies can be boosted and you can mix them a little bit more. And for that you are going to have to talk a little bit more slowly so you can open a little bit more but also you are going to have to be toning a little bit more uh, some diction muscles such as this muscle here which is really good for singing because it's the muscle of rounding. Another example of how people can modify their voice to get what they want this is again subconscious but for example this is used by females a lot when they want to seduce a guy, usually the voice starts becoming a little bit more breathy and a little bit higher. When that happens, that gives the impression or the signal of a little bit of weakness. Of course, the instinct for males is going to be to protect. You also can use this more soft sound in which the vocal cords are coming a little bit less together with a little bit less contact you can use that to help suiting people so if you are talking to someone and they are feeling stressed for any reason then if you start softening your voice that is going to give them a sensation of calm as well so those are two ways that you probably already naturally use your voice to produce some effects in other people Hope you enjoyed that. If you liked it, please subscribe because I am all the time posting content like this. See you next video.